Hello everyone, this is Lance from Fly Fish Food, and uh, Cheech says he's bigger than me, so he's uh, forced me to share with you my most effective chronomid. No, not really, I could take him. I just kick him where it counts and then run, because he's slow. But uh, that Sasquatch, really, uh, he wanted me to show you this fly. It's been really productive for us, both on uh, fish or lakes where there are native fish, and lakes or native and wild fish, and lakes with stockies. Uh, either way, anywhere there's chronomids, if you give this fly a go, I think you'll find it's really effective. Uh, I call it the chronomid Frenchie. Uh, I think you'll see if you're familiar with my Frenchie pattern, yeah, there's a lot of similarities to it. It's uh, also called, uh, there's a Sasquatch that works in our shop anyway, that calls it the Silver Lancer. I don't know what that means. Anyhow, uh, it started out with a uh, nice hook. So we've got a Hannock 230 here. This is a size 12. You could do them in 14s, 16s, even as big as a 10. Uh, one thing that's interesting, I like to tie a lot of my chronomids on straight shank hooks, which is a little bit of a departure. Most people seem to like them on curved hooks, and you'll definitely catch fish either way. Um, I like the hook holding capability of the straight hook a little bit better than the curved, especially when they're barbless. So I tie them on this hook. I think if you try it, you'll like this one as well. Anyhow, I've got a uh, 2.8 or 764th inch 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead in nickel. Uh, on the on that size 12 230 and I'm going to use UTC 70 in red for the, the thread so first thing I'm going to do is slide the bead actually on the hook and then back to the bend of the hook then I'll start the thread right at the eye and use as little few wraps as possible and what we're going to do is tie in a little a little bit of uh, yarn for some gills so I'm going to tie in some sparkly merger yarn in clear white and we're going to latch it in right behind the eye. And this is one of those where the less wraps you can make, the better, because we're going to have to slide the bead back over there. So I'll get a couple of wraps to hold it in place. And then I'll come in here and cover it up so you can't see it with my finger. There you go. And then trim it away. So it's nice and, nice and short. Um, you really don't even have to do that step if you want, but it, it makes people that study chronomids a little more comfortable with it because <laughs> they do have gills. The fish probably don't care. So anyhow, we've got the gills on there. Now I'm going to get the bead and push it up back over the up over the top of the thread. Then I'm going to start the thread right behind the bead, just like you normally would. Get rid of the tie-in excess there. Okay, so same thread, still UTC 70 in red. And the next step is to take some small silver wire. Okay, small silver wire. We're going to wrap down the shank. But I'm just going to first tie it in right here behind the bead. And so that I don't make a big lump at the back end, I'm going to tie it full length. And then before I get too far, I'm going to save some thread and some thickness and tie in some ring neck center tails in muskrat gray, nature spirit. This is a dyed gray color, so it's a, it's a natural pheasant tail that ends up being quite dark, almost black in color. You can see how dark it is, but it's not. it's actually not quite as dark in person as it shows up on the screen. But... But it's pretty dark. I'm going to pull maybe, I don't know, five or six fibers away from the pheasant tail. And I'm going to tie them in tip first and just capture them with the thread right up here behind the bead. And then I'm going to wrap both the wire and the pheasant tail down the shank all at once. Again, this just makes for a really thin body. You could wrap the wire down, then move the thread back up and wrap the pheasant tail down, but it's just using extra thread, using extra time and I guess I like to time fast so I'm gonna try and keep it thin that seems to make a difference as well oops my thread started to fray there I better take a couple so I don't break it okay a couple extra wraps of thread I'm just gonna throw a quick whip finish in here to hold it in place I'm gonna use the bobbin cradle on the rotary vise and the next step is just use some super glue some zap brush on or any super glue really will work great and just Put a little bit of it on the shank. This will make the pheasant tail last a lot longer. Uh, you can do it without that step, but if you've ever worked with pheasant tail, you know that it doesn't last on the hook very long. By putting a little bit of super glue in there, it will make the life of this fly much, much longer. Okay, one more trick. I'm going to wrap the pheasant tail the opposite direction I wrapped the thread. That's in, on purpose so that I can then wrap the wire the same direction as I wrap the thread, which makes the wire easier to tie off. And in turn, it uh, counter wraps the pheasant tail to make it more durable. So I wrap the pheasant tail up the shank. Okay, 
Now I'm going to capture it with the thread, which usually requires, because it's going the opposite direction as the thread, it requires a few extra turns. I usually take a couple that way, then a couple, then a couple over the top, then a couple in front to just pinch it in place. There we go. I got to get the bobbin cradle out of there so you can see it. Now I've got it cut off. Sorry, tied off. Now I'm going to cut it off. And then you can throw another half hitch in here or a whip finish. As you may have noticed, and Kelly Barnes likes to point out, I have the smoothest, silkiest, softest hands ever. So, uh, you know, the old thread likes to get frayed by my fingers. So I usually use a whip finish. But if you don't have my dry skin problem, you could just throw a half hitch in there. That would work just great instead of the whip finish. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap the wire the same direction as the thread and just rib it through just like you would a pheasant tail or any other sort of nymph. Just spacing wraps. Move that out of the way again. Capture the wire with the thread. And then just wiggle it back and forth till it breaks off. That makes it so it doesn't have a sharp point. Also has less bulk. Okay, the last step is to add one of the magic materials. The old UV Shrimp Pink Ice Dub. If you don't have some of this, you should buy about six bags because you're going to go through it fast. This is like magic fish potion. So we're going to add some UV Shrimp Pink. Like always, less is more with dubbing. Uh, I'm just going to put a tiny bit on here. It won't take much. Maybe a touch more than I got. Let's make just a little more. All right, that's looking better. A little bit of dubbing on here. Just going to create a hot spot behind the bead. No chronomids don't have a hot spot, but fish like hot spots. I don't know why. Then I'm going to use the red thread to tie it off. So we've got the gills up front, the silver bead, the red thread, the hot or the shrimp pink, excuse me, hot spot, and the dark body. And it's not as uh, anatomically correct as a lot of chronomids. But I assure you that this is my most productive chronomid. If you want to get nitpicky in here like I do, I trim away some of those fuzzy fibers. But after a few fish, it's going to get pretty beat up and the fish will still eat it. The chronomid Frenchie, also known as the Silver Lancer by some roaming Sasquatch. Give it a whirl.